نستعينه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم اما بعد second part of the topic the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercy of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when we talk about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is evident in sending Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to mankind. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ You're sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing but a mercy or a source of mercy for people, not just for Muslim, for everyone. And the mercy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is present in how he cares. Not only about people who follow him, but people who don't follow him. Not only people who like him, but people who harm him. Not only for believers, but also for disbelievers. He has an objective to guide people to Jannah. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they refuse, he uses a method that has so much optimism that maybe not now, maybe later. And he is the role model for us, which means we have to have that mercy and that optimism in people when we deal with them. I may see a person smoking and I advise him, and he may not listen. He may even look down at me. He may even say something bad to me. I don't give up. At the same time, I'll be kind and respectful. And I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him. There was a question. A sheikh was asked, what is the best way to deal with someone you care for so much, you want him to be guided, you want him to be good, but he's refusing and he's even going against you. What's the best way to deal with him? And you know what the answer was? Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him. Just tell him, Allah yahdik. The sad part is when we say Allah yahdik, even our parents, I'm sure some of you would know their parents, when they're mad at you, they say Allah yahdik, which is good. So what do we develop from that? We tend to, when someone tells the other person, Allah Yahdik, that he did something wrong. Ittaqillah means have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, means don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed him in the beginning of Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayyuha nabi ittaqillah. O oh, Prophet Muhammad, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does that mean? When you are good and someone tells you taqillah, it means continue on doing good. Or it means I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you stay good because I can be good now and bad tomorrow and vice versa. So when you say Allah yahdik, you should mean it. You don't say it in a way that you're angry or you're walking away, or you basically had enough with that person. It should be from the bottom of your heart, and we'll show you some examples. We said Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam last time that his journey to a Ta'if, city about 50 miles from Mecca, where he went to call people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, where he couldn't call no more in Mecca, Yet he couldn't be quiet or sit idle, leave people go to hell and not do anything about it. So he took it on himself walking to a taif. And you heard the story. He was received badly and he was hurt badly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him the support to take revenge if he wants. Destroy all at-ta'if, crush it, sandwich it between two mountains. 
the angel of the mountain was there angel Gabriel or Jibreel alayhi salam was there at his service and his final decision was what no maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring one of their offsprings who says la ilaha illallah maybe one will enter the Jannah and when I said final decision makes it sound like you really have to think about it it's like uh, okay can you hang on for a second and I go think about it or talk to my wife or something it was immediate no because he never revenge himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam he never uh, did yani if someone harms him harms his self his body he doesn't take revenge he only gets angry when someone violates the rules of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he never addresses the person in person meaning directly to the person he would ad uh, address general so the person will not get embarrassed or feel have negative feeling or something uh, let's say Ibrahim says something wrong right now I would not address it right away we pray we do something and I come and I say what's wrong with some people doing such and such or saying such and such so I'm talking about every one of you not just him so this is the method of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Huraira radiallahu an he came one time he was angry at his people he called them to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they rejected him bad so he came with some of his companions to prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said oh prophet of allah i asked daus daus is the name of the tribe to believe and they refused one person said halakat daus it's over for daus why because he's complaining to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hears this, he thought he's going to supplicate and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to destroy them. It's like, you have a problem with the police, and I call the police, or I report you to the police, or I take you to the police, and you go, it's over. Look what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Allahumma, Allahumma hdi daus wa bihim. O Allah, guide daus and bring them to you. Yani Muslimin. And subhanallah, all of daus became Muslim. Another incident, his mother. He said, O Prophet of Allah, I keep telling my mom to believe in you and to say the shahada and she keeps refusing and i kept telling her and telling her and telling her and then finally she said something bad about you and i got so angry and he was crying why my mom would say something about the prophet because you might come and look at yourself and see how you react when someone says something about your family Versus someone says something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his messenger. Maybe someone would stop for Allah, cuss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you continue in drinking your coffee and praying, and it's nothing. But when someone mentions something and you hear the name of your dad or mom or sister or someone, you go crazy. What did you say? You talking about me? Wow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just go on. It's like, oh, you know, he's just cussing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we come and we say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you heard the ayah. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا If you think all of your family members, your money, your wealth, your homes, your business is more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, then wait. Wait for death or day of judgment. And then you will see the reality. And then that you would wish that you really 
say the right thing and did the right thing. That's when the person says, Ya laytani ittakhadtu ma'ar rasooli sabila. I wish that I followed the sunnah. I wish I prayed those two rak'ah after the fart. I wish that I really care about the sunnah the way I care about the fart. I wish I really like to see what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does. How does he look? I want to look like him. I want to behave like him. I want to be like him. What kind of love if we cannot take Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example? I want to dress like him. I want to have something in me that reminds me of him. It's as simple as that. That's what love is. That's what the love of the companions is. How did they used to behave? How were they were with their mothers, with their wives, with their the sahabiyat, with their husbands and such? And you take that. This is the righteous approach to that. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu made dua for his mother. Look what he said. Allahumma hdi umma Abi Hurairah. Oh Allah guide the mother of Abu Hurairah. So Prophet, so Abu Hurairah was so excited. Excited about what? Who can guess? The dua. What is so exciting about the dua? He was so happy because he knew that his mom is not going to be the same mom that he left. His belief in the dua of the Prophet ﷺ is so real to the point like done deal. So he went back to give the good news to his mom. Mom, did you know? You know, he wanted to tell her, Mom, did you know? Prophet Muhammad ﷺ made dua for you. Look how happy he is for his mom to be guided. And when he was calling her and she said something bad, he was trying for his mom to be guided. So when I see you for instance you're doing something and your mom and your dad against you and you know it's the right thing and you know it's religion because we have parents who are not religious or don't have the knowledge put it in your heart that when you talk to them when you behave with them you want them to be guided you want to save them you care for them don't get angry in the sense that you cut relationship with them or you disrespect them Get angry inside that they're not listening. You want to save them. It's good for them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was calling his dad, yani you can actually cry if you want to recite the ayat. Ya abati, ya abati, la ta'abudi shaytan, inna shaytan kana lirrahmani asiyya. Ya abati, inni akhafu alayka, inni akhafu ayya massaka athabu min ar-Rahman, fatakuna lil shaytani waliyya. All of his address, my dear father, my dear father, I fear for you. I fear for you from the shaitan that you will be supported to him and then you get punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, 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 I. And then when his dad told him, listen, if you keep talking, I'm going to stone you to death or get out of my face. What was the result? Salam alaikum, dad. I will continue to make dua for you and left. Put yourself in that situation, how angry we will be and how you would walk away and you storm away and you probably say something bad and you would, God knows what you would do. And he fulfilled his promise until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you can't make dua for the disbeliever after you already know that they are the people of the hellfire. You can make general dua, but not with the mercy, because the mercy is something special given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believers. The mercy is something so huge. Now, the mercy is different kinds. There is general mercy and there is specific mercy. We're talking about the specific mercy. This is the general mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, create, I mean, uh, provides for you and gives you and takes care of you and all of that. We're not talking about that. So Abu Hurairah went to his mom so excited to tell her and when he got there at the door he heard some sound of water and some noise. So he knocked at the door and when he heard all of this 
his mom ran to put her hijab on you, you know this we have to stop on this and reflect she ran to put her hijab on because she doesn't know if it's Abu Huraira number one and number two hmm uh, it's for believers hijab is for Muslims oh before she even said the shahada she know about hijab wow and she went to really fulfill that before she even said the shahada yeah because you can say the shahada to yourself you don't have to come and tell him about it to become a Muslim but we do it because we're so happy for them when someone comes and yeah at the time of the pagan time women wear hijab non-muslims in fact pagans so it's nothing new to them the way they dress and, and, and all of that this is basic modesty that everyone knows in fact it distinguishes slaves from free women free women wear the hijab slaves don't so when you see someone in the street not wearing the hijab automatically to you you would say that this is not a free woman this is a slave so she opened the door and she looked at Abu Huraira before he even speak and he said Ashhadu, she said Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah and look at the happiness of Abu Huraira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding his mother so this is exact well, these are examples there's another example with the the tribe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also made dua for before the battle of uh, Hunayn Thaqif Thaqif refused Islam badly in fact they fought against Muslim in the battle of Hunayn and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam followed them they uh, took shield in their fortresses and it was very strong they could not conquer it so the companion, he, he basically stayed a whole month trying to break in. And they were shooting arrows from behind the walls. And the companions were really tired and injured. So they complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi O Prophet of Allah, make dua, make dua against him. They, they really got us bad with those arrows. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahum mahdi thaqifa. Oh Allah, guide thaqif. All of them accepted Islam. Wow. This is the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It reached the peak. Wife died. Uncle died. People of Mecca can't take him anymore. Cannot make da'wah more. Went to Al-Taif. No hope in there. He was injured badly, he was tired, he was exhausted. Uh, everything is going, seems like against him. Now it's time for rejuvenation. It's time for easiness. Because when the pain and the suffering gets to the max, easiness comes. So when you feel, when you have a problem and it gets to the point where you can't deal with it anymore, that's when the solution is coming. Don't give up. You know, one uh, uh, famous Arabian guy called Antara. You know Antar, right? I even, when I see one of those macho guys, uh, I call him Shoya Antar. And he, you use that name, uh, it's like... A, figure that everyone is compared to when you have courage and strength and such he arm wrestled one not arm wrestled uh, they were competing he will each one will bite the hand of the other person and whoever gives up first is the loser so Antar the other guy out that's it so Antar told him, if you stayed one second, I was going to give up. <laughs> you, you die for that. When you know that after that, it could be a big win or something for one second you could have done. But he doesn't know. 
So when we think or when we hear the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know it's true, take it for granted. When you feel so horrible and he tells you the solution comes, hang in there. It could be minutes, it could be days, it could be something really short and you can handle it and then the solution would come because that's patience. No way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inflict you with something you cannot handle. That's against the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where is or where are we or what are we lacking when we say I give up? Patience, we don't have it properly. As I mentioned before, I said patience starts when you say I have no patience anymore. That's when it starts not finishes that's the start of patience before that you were normal dealing with people life hard work hard family hard dealing hard study everyone goes through that but when it gets so tough now you need the patience so it looks over what you can handle and it is but with patience it will not be so we need to have patience. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bil sabr wa salah. When you are given up, seek help in what? In prayer and in patience. And if you don't think prayer requires patience, look at how people pray and how quick they finish and how quick they leave and how quick they'll go back to what they were doing and how little they care about tasbih or dhikr or sunnah, it tells you how much patient you are. And look how much it's delayed. Did you pray? Ah, yeah, yeah, inshallah. And then you go do whatever you're doing. And they said, yeah, inshallah, in five minutes. And then, then oh my God, there's only five minutes. Boom, 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 boom. And then, okay, yeah, yeah, I prayed, alhamdulillah, on time. Yeah, right. You did pray on time, and mashallah. Wallah, astaghfirullah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there, you will not see him. Because you were just not there. That's why you find special people at the time of their prayer, they're ready. They go for that. Because that's the time of relaxation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you relaxation. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, when he heard his son died, he stepped off his animal and he start praying or wants to start praying so they told him i'm telling you your son died and you go going to pray he said haven't you heard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salah o you who believe seek help through salah and patience i'm patient my son died and i'm going to pray so i can continue to have that patience this is what you call understanding the Quran, understanding what you recite, putting it in real practice. It's not just, oh yeah, uh, raise your hand. Uh, if you are in trouble, uh, name one thing you would seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me, 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 patience. Take his phone for my five minutes and give me that phone. See, look at him, he's upset already. You take it and say, why? What did I do? What do you want to do with it? Okay, just get, this is, I'm talking father to son or mother to daughter. This is just basic. I just said, give me the phone. Why you jumped like you did something bad or you expected punishment or give me the phone here. You know, actually I did that with my students a few times. They take the phone they're using. They're not allowed to use it. I don't even talk because I don't like interruption. So. I just go with my hand like that to them. Good students, they just hand it. I set it aside and after we finish, I give it back to them, which is supposed to go to the principal. And they don't get it until that. But when someone is behaving disrespectful, you gotta have to give him an opportunity to continue on being respectful. respectful. Others will be arguing. So usually the father or the mother punishes the son because they don't respond right away. And that is evident all the time. So when you obey, 
expect something good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you don't, then consequences are usually bad. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, difficulty is reaching the max. And when it reaches the max, relief comes with it. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alaykum wa So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you've been tested, you succeeded, you won, you have the patience, you have the love, you have the courage, you have the care, you lost everything, it didn't stop you, people rejected you on earth, I'm going to show you who you are, where it counts. So you can go to someone in the street and he say, MashaAllah, you're a wonderful person, everything, big deal. Take that testimony and go apply for a job. He's going to tell you, who's that guy? Doesn't do anything. But when you come and take it from someone, professor, you say, so and so, gave me this recommendation or his, his phone number, call him. Oh, wow. Come on in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, those people on earth don't matter. They rejected you. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what's good for them. But I'm going to show you who you are with the one who created you, with those of the best of angels. So at night, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam descended through the ceiling on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sleeping, took him, Burak was waiting, it's an animal bigger than a donkey, almost size of a mule, rode on him, one step as far as your eyes can see. That's how much distance he covers. Took Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from Masjid al Haram in Mecca to Al Masjid al Aqsa in Jerusalem. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad وسلم, led the prayers with the prophets. Can you imagine if you're there? All the prophets there. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reciting what a feeling, what a scene, what kind of serenity, what kind of peace you're going to have, what kind of a status for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the prophets, a hundred 24,000 prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. 315 messengers. And then after that, Jibreel alayhi salam and him took a vehicle and took him to the sky. First guy, he met Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Yeah, the sky has a door, and there is a door bin, and they have to know who's coming and who's going. Who's this? Angel Jibreel, who's with you? Prophet Muhammad, oh, for him we are commanded to open. Tawaddal, tawaddal. Wow, Prophet Adam, assalamu alaikum, my son, alaikum salam Say something good to Prophet, but... He noticed something. When Prophet Adam السلام, looks to the right, he smiles. When he looks to the left, he cries. Then he asked Angel Jibreel السلام, why? He said, when he looks to the right, that's his children who are going to Jannah. And those to his left are the children, the spirits of the children who are going to hellfire. Let's go. Long trip. Second floor. Second sky. Who is it? Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Who's with you? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Who's there? Yahya alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. Yahya and Isa alayhi salam. They're cousins, right? And welcome Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then continue to the third. 
he met Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned that he was given the, yani we know his, how handsome he is and his looks, how great he is. And people, when they talk about beauty or looks and handsome men and prophets and such, they always, Prophet Yusuf Aysan comes on top. But in reality, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the most handsome. But the difference between the two, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given so much haiba. He's so revered. He is so respected. He's so high in the eyes of the people. His enemy, they have plans to do such and such to him. But when they see him, they can do it. You know how sometimes you just respect someone just for the way he is? Prophet Muhammad is like that. So no one dares to do with Prophet Muhammad what was done with Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Went to the fourth, Idris alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيَّ we raised him high status, fourth sky. Went to the fifth, Prophet Harun alayhi salam. Again, everyone, he knocks at the door and he's questioned who is there. And then he says, Salaamu Alaikum to the Prophet. They talk about here and there and then they continue for the next. The next one, which is number six, he met Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Musa ibn Imran. He is the brother of Prophet Harun alayhi salam. And this is, uh, subhanAllah, and he, uh, he did the biggest favor to Prophet Harun alayhi salam. He made him a prophet, a messenger actually. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Musa alayhi salam to Pharaoh, he said, O oh Allah, waj'al li waziran min ahli Harun akhi. And give me some support. Make it my brother Harun. Are you Harun brother? Your brother, right? So if someone sent you for a mission, do your brother a favor. <laughs> so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his request and Prophet Harun alayhi wa sallam became a messenger and look how he confessed you know sometimes you can be someone so big but you're lacking something no one perfect so Prophet Musa alayhi wa sallam being whom he is He's not as fluent in speech like his brother. So he even told his, his uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَخِي هَارُونَ هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا فَأَرْسِلْهُ مَعَ يَرِدَ يُصَدِّقُنِي My brother, he is more eloquent than me. He speaks better. Send him with me to support me. Because when you want to talk to people, you want some professionalism and someone who can uh, speak clearly and all of that. So he asked for that. It's not like I am the best, even though with the parts that you are, you think that you're not. Confess, admit, humble yourself to other. That's what he did. So he went to the seventh and he met Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then he went to Sidrat al-Muntaha. This is the part that makes you understand Sidrat al-Muntaha is a tree with unimaginable beauty, unimaginable size of the fruit of it, or the flower of it, or the gold butterflies that lands on it, decoration. Just imagine. Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so dazzled with what he is seeing and it's like you're not thinking walking and it's like where is Jibreel alayhi salam Jibreel alayhi salam is standing he's not advancing with him and he said come on is this where a friend would leave his friend it's like <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at and you're staying there what then Jibreel alayhi salam told him, 
this is my final spot. I cannot exceed that or I will be gone. This is where you understand the Quran, some of the ayat. وَمَا مِنَّا إِلَّا لَهُ مَقَامٌ مَعْلُومٌ Every one of us has a specific task and a specific place and a specific duty that no angel will deviate. مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى The vision was focused. It did not go looking here and there. It just going for the mission. And then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he ascended higher with him and he was within close proximity with the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I want you to reflect on when we say the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, just like when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke with Prophet Musa Alayhi Salam near the burning bush, as you know. You cannot imagine it. You cannot imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot think about it. If you think about it, you deviate. If you imagine, you deviate. Because we've never seen him and we don't know anything like him. We take it as is. He spoke and he was so close as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى He was a distance of two arm length or even closer. But we leave it as is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose over the throne as is. We don't say how, we don't compare. All of that is a form of deviation because we don't know. This is like someone speaking about what happens in the grave. We only know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because we've never been there. You know, it's like someone, how does it feel? I said, when I die and I come back, I'll let you know. And surprisingly, you go to YouTube, you'll find some people died and came back. And I said, yeah, right. What kind of drugs is using? Died and came back. Once you die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِن وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ It's over. You are in a separate state of life, different than dunya. There are rules in the grave, different than this rule. And there are rules of the day of judgment, different than the rules of the grave. Each one is a stage, life, barzakh, day of judgment. Just understand that. So when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't compare. He got so close, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to uh, as close as where the actions are written. The angels that write our deeds and records and all of that. This is, this is like uh, administration department. You could, you could say comparing to ours where he can actually hear the sound of the pens and the pencils and all of that I mean, in our understanding uh, being, re being used. This is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And then here is the big thing. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala spoke to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and gave him a specific message to us. What is it? 50 prayers per day. Yeah, you heard me right, brother. Five zero. Not five. Five with a donut. <laughs> 50. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, took the message and let's go, Angel Jibreel. Angel Jibreel going, descended. Prophet Musa alayhi salam when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu left him, he cried. And it's like, why are you crying? He was asked, he said, because a young man is sent after me, he will have more followers than me. Talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he is jealous in a positive way. Because when I make da'wah and I compete with Sheikh Muhammad, it's not I compete with him, like I hear that, mashallah, he gave a lecture and 10 people accepted Islam. I feel positive jealousy, we call it ghibta. I wanna be like him, I wanna have 10, I wanna have more even. But I don't want him to be affected in the sense where he doesn't have anyone, I want him to continue to be blessed, but I wanna do like him. So Prophet Musa was like that. 
He's not crying because he's jealous. He's crying because he wants to have that great status of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu But to prove that to you, here is the deal. Coming down, passed by, Prophet Musa salam stopped him. Prophet Musa salam came before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He dealt with the Israelite. He knew what hardship is. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has so much similarities dealing with the people like Prophet Musa alayhi wa so he said, oh, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you? Did he tell you anything? He said, yeah. He told me to command my followers to pray 50 times. He said, 50 times? <coughs> they will not do it. They will not do it. You know, like, I know, brother. I've been there. I had experience. I dealt with those people. 50 times? No, 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 no. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and request less. So he looked at Jibreel alayhi salam. It's like, would you take would you take me back? He's right. No problem. Go back. Oh Allah. Make it easy for the people. He said, okay, 40. So he went back. Ah, what happened? Alhamdulillah, he dropped it 10. He said, 40. 40? They will not do it. Go back. He kept sending him. Until his he dropped it 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. He came back and he said, okay, what? He said, alhamdulillah, only five. They will not do it. Stop for Allah. Go back. He told him, this is it. I am so shy to keep asking. And then when we think about that, number one, I feel so good when I hear that Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Can you imagine you praying 50? You know that like every half an hour you have a salah. Goodbye UTA, right? <laughs> you get one salah at UTA and people, Sheikh, what am I going to do? Make wudu where? The, this, uh, this hallway is full and that one. For one salah. You can't even manage praying on time for one salah. So subhanallah, five, and he said they can't deal with it, and you can see it. 1.7 billion Muslim. How many of them you think pray five times a day? Do you think we'll get 10%? I doubt it. Five daily prayers, half an hour a day. 48 half hours in the day, you cannot dedicate half an hour to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You dedicate hours and hours for your friends, friends, for the phone, for something that doesn't even talk. You dedicate it for your school, you go for years of study. But for the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't give half an hour. That's why I say we need to think Think of, are you really appreciative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And even that prayer that you pray, is it really done the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves? Subhanallah. Prophet Musa alayhi salam made it easy for us. But look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. He said five prayers, but I'll count it for you 50. Wow. It's like you work eight hours a day and your boss comes and he tells you, do one hour work in that and I'll count it for you eight hours. What a blessing. What a mercy. When we talk about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to really picture it and imagine it and know that he really loves us and he really wants us to be good. He wants us to be guided. He wants us to go to Jannah. He created us in Jannah. Our father, Prophet Adam السلام, was in Jannah. So we're created for Jannah. But because of the temptation, we descended to earth. And he promised us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do good, you will never have a miserable life here or there. Don't ever think a believer having a hard time here on this life 
let it be sickness, let it be punishment, let it be hunger, let it be poverty, let it be any of those things that we don't like. Don't ever think that he is miserable. Never. I keep reflecting on one word that Bilal radiallahu anhu said. They told him, they punish you. The, 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 yani his owner, because he was a slave, Umayyah, I believe, Umayyah bin Khalaf, he was punishing him daily, putting him under the heat 140 degrees and put rocks on him and beat him and does everything to him and all that pain and suffering. And all he has to do is say something bad about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that if you fear for your life, you can do that. You're forgiven. So people asked him, how come you did not take advantage of that and save yourself all that pain? You know what he said? That will show you what kind of a life believers have. He said, the sweetness of faith resides in the heart. And the pain and the worry and all of that also in the heart. Mixed with the bitterness of punishment and torture, the sweetness overwhelmed it. I don't have to say anything. So the pain that I'm receiving, it's not really pain to me. I don't care. Because I feel so good. You, know, you ever had a headache that feels good? Sheikh <laughs> Muhammad, Umar wajahak rasak, it feels good? <laughs> I have a headache that feels so good. So this is, this is how the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the sweetness of ibadah, this is the sweetness of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that peace and serenity. Ibn Taymiyyah was put in jail and beaten and everything. And subhanallah, he was saying that my heaven is in my heart. What my enemies can do to me? It's here. It's with me. Anywhere I go, I'm in heaven. Brothers, even the people in jail with Ibn Taymiyyah, when he was in jail, they were so good, feeling good, being with him, listening to him, talking, his lectures, his talk. Picture yourself in jail when someone comes in and said and calls your name out, you're free to go, you're released. Wow! You'll be so happy jumping and alhamdulillah and all of that. When they used to receive that, they say, we don't want to go. We're happy in jail. I want to stay with this guy. I feel good here. It's better than my life on this earth. This is the religion. But when we don't practice it, and we don't know it good, we don't feel that taste. You know, like doing, for instance, Qiyam al -Layl. And you do it the first time, nothing in it. You don't feel anything. In fact, you doubt if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it because you were sleepy or you're yawning, you're trying to finish, your wudu is half and half, you don't want to wake up. But if you do it for, I'm not going to tell you five years or 10 years or 20 years, just like some of the predecessors, they said, I did Qiyam for 10 years, then I enjoyed it for 20 years. Which means 10 years doing something, forcing himself to do something he doesn't enjoy. And then he tastes the sweetness of it. Look at Ramadan. The first day you're complaining, the second day you're complaining, the third and after that, start getting easy and people are not complaining anymore. But unfortunately, when it comes to ibadah, when it comes to worship, Ramadan should make you really go to the max with ibadah. Most of us, they're so excited the first day, second day for taraweeh and everything and start decreasing, 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 decreasing. And then when you feel like it's toward the end, you don't want to even come. It's like the night of 27 is finish Ramadan, come after 27, people not in. Ramadan is a college. It's a college, you got to graduate with it. You got to graduate with taqwa. It's coming. So feel the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taste the goodness of the ibadah. Understand your religion. Know who you are. You never be confident of yourself. You never be so proud of yourself. You never show your identity unless you understand your religion and know 
that it is the greatest ni'mah that you are blessed to be a Muslim. If you don't know all of this, it's hard for you to, you want to blend. You want to look like the rest. It's like you worry about how you look. You don't want people to recognize you. It's because you don't know what you have. This is like someone having gold and doesn't really know the value of gold and he throws it in the trash. Another person, you throw in that? Look, that's gold. This is like someone memorizing the Quran and doesn't really understand the value of that jewel of the Quran and then he forgets it. Well, no one would do that. You have the Quran. Well, the heart that has the Quran doesn't even, the hellfire doesn't burn that heart because of the Quran in it. So knowing yourself and knowing your religion gives you a different life, a different perspective, a different enjoyment. You start worshiping out of enjoyment. When you wake up in the morning tired, you know whom you're waking up for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's work, we jump. We don't question, we go, we don't think. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we continue to roll and continue to complain and continue to have excuses. That's not the way believers are. So know yourself and know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, the Prophet sallallahu mercy, and you will live a wonderful life inshallah. I hope that each and every one of you be, especially this brother here, uh, Brother Ala or Abu Ala? Ala Abu Yusuf. Brother Ala Abu Yusuf. In fact, I was going to ask you, brother, how come you don't come? But I know it's only for youth, and you are young, bro. Definitely in the air, so I. Jazakumullah <laughs> <laughs> khairan. Now you know, as they say, pass the word, gain reward. If you don't talk, yani you know what advertisement, the first time I remember I wanted to do an advertisement on TV for business, uh, it was so expensive. So I said, I want to do an advertisement and they told me how many times? And I said, how many times with the price you gave me one time and you should thank me for it. <laughs> how many times? I said one time and he said, you know, obviously to them, I'm a rookie. So he said, you have to do it so many times people will not even look at it or read it until it, you're, they're forced to read it. When I came to the United States, first thing I saw on TV is an advertisement for, uh, what's your favorite food in the morning, brother? That thing, the stuff that you put with, with milk? Cereal. Yeah, cereal, yeah, that, <laughs> chips. Cereal. Chips, yeah. Chips. Um, <laughs> you know the donut one? Cheerios? Yeah. Cheerios. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the way they used to present it on the on the commercial, Cheerios. <laughs> and then you see those rings flying, and then they fall into the glass of milk, and splash comes out. Oh, you flip the channel, I flip yeah. the channel, I flip the channel, I flip. And I said, one time, one time, years after, years, I was going to Kroger shopping, and I was going, that's the one I always see. Wallahi, I want to try it. I still eat it. The point I'm making, they gained me, they got me to buy it years after. And the same thing when we talk about dawah. I may talk to the brother day after day after day after day after day, and no, don't have time, no, don't have time, then finally, come. Some people receive the Quran, a gift, and they put it aside on the table. Uh, what's his name? The one who accepted Islam, the singer, uh, Cat Stevens. What did he say? Quran. He was given. He was given a mushaf. Four years later, he was putting it on the table, sitting one time, had nothing to do, so he took the mushaf and started reading, became a Muslim. So don't ever belittle your efforts. You get the hasanat with the action, whether they accept or not. Can you imagine a prophet come the day of judgment and doesn't have a single follower? A single follower, and some of them have three to ten. Years and years of da'wah and they get it. So don't give up. Talk to your friends, talk to people, advertise, bring. We're, we're just having fun with a, talking about the one that 
we love the most, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So do that and always be optimistic. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. We can take one question. Remember, I told you to prepare some. قصدك بين التراويح بين الركعات؟ بين الركعات الشيخ هيصلي عادي وبعدين يقوم واحد يقوم محدده يقول الخاطره بحيث تقدر تدريب له بيقرا في الحديث يقول معناه هيقراه مره او ممكن ممكن اثنين واحد يقرا الحديث والاخر يشرح في مشكله نعم دي واحده الاقتراح الثاني ان احنا عاوزين يوم افطار للشباب بس الافطار ده يكون للشباب هم واصحابهم مسلمين وغير مسلمين يعني لو في مسلمين معاهم في اليو تي اي في غير مسلمين يجوا يفطروا معانا دي دعوه الى الله عز وجل وبيشوفونا يقعدوا كراسي كده نحط لهم كراسي نشوفونا ازاي بنصلي يفطروا معانا نتكلم معاهم نشوفوا ايه اللي بيحصل في المساجد احنا لو حصل لنا حاجه زي زي نيوزيلندا دي حصل في نيوزيلندا شوف انت الشعب هناك وقف ازاي مع المسلمين صحيح 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 صلاه صحيح. الجمعه وطلعوا لبسوا الحجاب النساء وحتى ال فالناس ليه؟ لانه دخلوا وشافوا الناس عايزين الناس دي تيجي لو حصل لا قدر الله وده ممكن يحصل في اي وقت ممكن يحصل لنا احنا في اي وقت فايه المانع يبقى احنا عرفوا ايه اللي في الاسلام في المساجد جوا يعرفوا يتكلموا عننا يعرفوا يتكلموا عنا. The suggestion of the Sheikh which I strongly agree with Ramadan we want to have some of you youngsters to give a khatira every day, a different person give a khatira between the taraweeh, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, read a hadith, read an ayah, reflect on it, give an advice, and practice how to give da'wah and how to seek knowledge. It, it, it will take you little time to prepare. You can prepare with the shaykh, you can prepare with me, with anyone of knowledge. Uh, it, it can be a video that you summarize, and you know, I make my students when they miss a homework or something like that, go and summarize a video. Read it, I mean, listen to it and summarize it. And, or present a speech. So that will encourage you, and that really a step to, toward making you like what I was talking about. We, look, the hardest thing is seeking knowledge. Harder than that is understanding it. Harder than that is applying it. And harder than that is calling for it. So you're seeking knowledge. I'm trying to make you understand it. Inshallah, you apply it. When you stand, it'll be calling for it. And I guarantee you, you will enjoy it and you would look forward. Imagine yourself, you visit your family, you visit your friends, and people eat and all of that. And you stand up and you say, okay, guys, uh, just give me five minutes. And then you remind them with a khatr. It will be such a wonderful way of doing it and a strange way at the same time. So we need to do that. So this is one thing that we need to do. Another thing is we need to assign a day only for youth to have iftar and bring your friends. I'm sure you have many Cindy's and Kathy and, and uh, Cynthia and all of those and Jim and Scott and Jose and all that. Bring them all. Bring your friends, Muslims and non-Muslims. Sit here. Let them eat with us. Let them mix with us. Let's see. Let them... Tell them who you are, what we are, what we do here. Let them know what Islam is all about. Because when they look at the masjid and people go in that masjid, they have no idea what's in the masjid. In fact, some people, when they used to come in, uh, in uh, da'wah, you know, like open house, it's like they come and like take me, you know, they, they came to center masjid. If any of you know center masjid, they came there, you know, the prayer hall, and we entered and they said, uh, okay, and I said, what would you want me to go? Oh, take us for a tour. And I said, here it is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't sit on chairs? No, brother, we can't afford it. <laughs> the mayor, the mayor one time when he came to Dar al-Iman, he was so amazed sitting on the floor. He said, how humbling to really sit on the floor. Because people, you know, when you sit on a chair, you, it's, it's a form of 
it gives you some kind of arrogant feeling. But when you sit on the ground, you create it from it. You're down to it. That's why you put your forehead on the ground when you make sujood. So make sure, inshallah, to plan for that speech and bring your friends, talk to them. Raise your hand if you have non-Muslim friends. You should, if you don't, you're not a good Muslim. Exactly, bring one. Can you? Can you imagine the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will that person that spoke with you or you knew and did not present Islam, he will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have her as a friend, I have him as a friend, and he never told me anything about Islam. How would you feel like that? Associating with someone all of your life or majority of your life, living here and not really caring for people. Because when you introduce Islam, that means you care. So make sure you bring them and, and share. You know, when I said, uh, how many of you uh, have friends, you know, you were scared to say me. Stop for Allah. <laughs> it's not a stop for Allah. It is something what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. He wants you to have. Yazalam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we just finished talking. He went from Mecca to Ta'if, walked for 80 kilometers. To call non-Muslims, not a single Muslim over there. You are with them, you sit with them, you talk with them, you eat with them, you walk with them, you play with them, and they don't know anything about Islam. Stuff for Allah, that's a stuff for Allah. khayran, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.